King Charles' funeral plans resurface as health remains a mystery sources told the Daily Beast that authorities are reviewing copies of hundreds of pages of documents titled Operation Menai Bridge. A code word for King Charles' death This is a question everyone in British society and power centres is asking, but no one asks publicly. Much less answers, how sick is Charles III? There is widespread talk in British society that King Charles is doing worse than his advisers are admitting. When discussing his health with the King's friends in recent weeks, the most common reaction was that his voice dropped about half an octave, followed by a long, somber declaration that he was not feeling well. Company officials did not respond to a formal request for comment from the Daily Beast on this matter. To be clear, since his team announced his cancer diagnosis earlier this year, in an unprecedented act of royal transparency, there has been no live commentary about his health. The king did not say what type of cancer he had been diagnosed with, except to say it was not prostate cancer. I've made it clear that I won't. He plans to travel to London regularly to undergo radiation therapy, which can be used to treat many types of cancer. Of course, if Charles were a private citizen, his health would be of no concern, but he is the leader of a hereditary monarchy. A head of state who can only be removed by death, or abdication, but that possibility seems low. Given the precedent of the late Queen Elizabeth, that could be the case. His predictions are of great public concern, even if his office doesn't want to admit it. It certainly employs some people in certain departments of government. For example, the Daily Beast reports that not only are Charles' funeral plans regularly updated, but also what went well after the Queen's funeral and what could be done better the next time the monarch dies. It was also said that some documents had been reviewed. Lessons learned and the most difficult of business evaluations, the scorecard, are in circulation in Whitehall. The Cabinet Office, the government department responsible for state funerals, declined to comment on claims that the Operation Menai Bridge document, as Charles' funeral plans were codenamed, was regularly updated. But he reiterated that it is customary not to comment on such plans. Family friends and insiders are deeply troubled by the prospect that Britain could lose its king much sooner than anyone thought, but are trying to remain positive. For example, an old family friend told the Daily Beast, Obviously, he's determined to beat it and they're committed to it. Everyone is still optimistic, but his performance is very poor. More than they admit. The same source told the Royalist that the late Queen Elizabeth died of bone marrow cancer months before her death, a fact later confirmed by royal friend and biographer Giles Brandreth. Adding insult to injury, multiple sources told the Daily Beast that authorities are now regularly reviewing copies of the hundreds of pages of Menai Bridge documents. Every member of the royal family has a bridge-based code word that they can use after death. As we all know, the plan for Queen Elizabeth's death was called Operation London Bridge. Menai Bridge is a dramatic suspension bridge that connects the island of Anglesey with mainland Wales. The Queen's funeral went like clockwork and the bar was set high. It's not an emotional thing, it's a job taken very seriously, and naturally, no one plans on getting caught. While all parties stress that the document is regularly reviewed by the palace and the military. One former official with active relationships with current courtiers said, the plan is back to square one. It is currently being actively promoted. This is not unexpected considering the king was diagnosed with cancer. However, it is certain that their popularity has sharpened the mind. Obviously they are looking at every aspect of the Minai Bridge, said another person familiar with senior officials involved in the royal funeral planning. The Queen's funeral went like clockwork and the hurdles were high. It's not an emotional thing, it's a job taken very seriously, and naturally, no one plans on getting caught.
military officials said the plan was under continuous review, but it would be foolish to read too much into the facts. We must remember the magnitude of this. The military is planning for the worst. General leading the way are the seven regiments of Major. James Bowder's Guards Division. There are also entire London boroughs, Territorial Army Regiments and the Royal Horse Artillery. That was before I joined the Navy or Air Force. Charles is planning for Charles' funeral began in earnest the day after the Queen's funeral. On military sources this is just a ceremonial end. If that were to happen, it would require a massive security operation, as every VIP on the planet would be there. We're talking about everything from missile defense to protection against lone wolf attacks. Everything would have to be carefully planned in advance, from lightning to explosions in less than two weeks. The day after the Queen's funeral, planning for Charles' funeral began in earnest. The coordinator of the whole thing is the so-called Earl Marshal, Duke of Norfolk, Edward Fitz Alan Howard. Some say that the honor of Earl Marshal is, oddly enough, hereditary, and has always been held by the Duke of Norfolk, the country's highest-ranking duke. A friend of the Duke's said, Eddie did a fantastic job at the Queen's funeral and coronation. He is only 67 so he'll always work for Charles. The possibility that Charles would die sooner than generally thought was not openly mentioned in the British press. One of the most notable of these clues was revealed in his Ephraim Hardcastle column in the February 22 Daily Mail. Only vaguely hinted at. Ephraim Hardcastle is a fictional avatar whose columns are written and edited by a rotating cast of Daily Mail journalists, based primarily on newsroom gossip. In the column in question, Mr. Hardcastle wrote about Prince William's plans to change the coronation process. Saying the prince had originally been advised to wait until after the general election before doing so. A formal agreement will probably be reached with the new prime minister, the author said, adding, there are signs of change. But the pace is likely to be less gradual than was expected a few weeks ago. Next. Mr. Hardcastle pointed out that Prince William once described his fate, to Tony Blair, as prison walls. Mr. Hardcastle said they come towards him as his time draws near. However, on the whole, the British press seemed to remain surprisingly silent about Charles' health and funeral plans. As one journalist told the Daily Beast, this is not simply out of respect for or consultation with the palace but rather because of the UK's very strict rules and laws governing medical privacy and the release of personal information. Even if he is absolutely sure that he has bladder cancer, he cannot confirm it, said the journalist. It's for a reason. Some foreign media have also left clear clues. Example, Dina Brown, founding editor of The Daily Beast, known for its impeccable royal ties, wrote in The New York Times with the near-simultaneous news of Prince Charles' cancer. Prince William and Duchess Kate came frighteningly close to inheriting the throne, even though they had hoped to raise their children out of the public eye for years. I hear that this prospect is causing them great anxiety. The palace has not disclosed what type of cancer the royal family is battling, but regular visits to London for treatment suggest that Prince Charles is undergoing radiotherapy. Unlike chemotherapy, radiation therapy is administered using large machines, said a cancer expert who requested anonymity. Chemotherapy can be administered in facilities found in more or less any farm hospital, but in many cases these two treatments can be used in combination. There's been little official news from the palace about how Prince Charles is actually doing, but there's a lot that's blowing in the wind especially the fact that he was shaking after a grueling and heartening effort, including touching hands 56 times. To greet the nation at Easter, Charles joked with the crowd outside St. George's Chapel in Windsor. Although he had been laughing and smiling, he had largely disappeared from public view in the three weeks since then. Since then, 
he looked haggard as he was driven to London for treatment in a large windowed ceremonial vehicle used to ensure he was seen. What's even more promising is that he went to Scotland on Sunday and went to church there. However, the most important clues to how his battle with the disease is progressing are important dates written in his diary. One of those events will be his official birthday parade, known as Trooping the Colour, on June 15, which the Pentagon announced he will attend. The royal family is constantly reminded that their posthumous departure will be a major, headline-grabbing event. They cannot escape this macabre obsession with death. Rumors then circulated that he would be participating in the Royal Ascot Horse Racing Festival in late June. His official visit to Australia following his visit to Samoa for the Australian Government Summit in mid-October has not yet been cancelled. The palace said plans for the trip continue. The king is not the only one who needs to rethink his funeral plans, New York Times best-selling royal author Christopher Anderson told The Daily Beast. William and Harry were still teenagers when they were asked to plan their own funeral. They are asked to choose their own music, flowers, and prayers and choose someone to read it. Royals are constantly reminded that their departure after death will be a major, headline-grabbing event. King Charles's reign will naturally be short, but no one knows how short at this point. They cannot escape this terrible obsession with death. In the meantime, we should not rely on the established practice of reviewing funeral plans to make this decision. It would be of great help if the palace were transparent about the king's condition and prognosis. Until that happens, rumors and speculation will continue and conspiracy theories will abound.